Uh, my name is Joel Metter again, and I'm going to talk about some authentication systems. Probably not the ones you care about, maybe it will be. Hey! Uh, part of this is going to be crowd participation because uh, I got sidetracked today and didn't get done. But uh, these are the contenders. And if I was doing this on my laptop, I had Let's Get Ready to Rumble queued up, but I don't have my laptop, so you'll have to imagine that. Let's get ready. Yeah, I can do it. So I'm going to talk about devices and some other stuff. Um, so if you've ever been to the famous and awesome website, uh, Ruby Toolbox, it just relaunched. And I pulled this down. Saw Docker after. Docker after is now on there. Yeah, we're sponsoring too. But you don't have to worry about that. Um, but it's a cool website if you want to find out like what the what the things are that do a particular thing. Uh, so plug in or gym that you need to do a particular job. So authentication is an example, uh, authorization, uh, document creation for Duck Um So device is way out in front. Let's move on. Uh, so device. The pluses are everyone uses it because everyone thinks it's the second coming of Christ. Um, and there's some other stuff, like it has a lot of support for, for things like Mongo. Um, it has a really extensible system, so there are a lot of plugins for it. Um, it's super active development, like the chart is just extremely active, lots of commits all the time. Um, I think it's stupid that it's an engine, or a uh, you know, middleware engine, and I don't really like it. And I feel like the ease of, of implementing it, where you're like, gem device, okay, I have a thing. Uh, I feel like it is a false ease. I think it's a really bad system, but I, that's just my opinion from using it. Um, I thought I would do a thing during this presentation where I would just show you the, the database layout for some stuff. Um, this is devices, and I realize now this is a really boring slide, so I'm going to skip all of them. Um, but an interesting thing about devices is uh, they kind of do. Unlike AuthLogic, which I'll talk about in a minute, they don't have magic columns. Um, you basically declare the things that you want your authentication to have. So in this case, I have an admin, and he can authenticate against the database, which means coming back here, there's an encrypted password, stuff like that. Um, there's some other stuff. This is this list is not complete. There are about 20 things, and if you had enough plugins, there's like 50. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Also, if anyone has questions about a thing, you should ask and interrupt me. Um, so this was my experience with Devise. Basically, I installed it and tried to use it on a project, and I realized now I wrote my notes instead of like the bullet points. So this is like 101 presentation kind of thing. Anyway, um, I feel like when I used it, it was really easy to get it going. And then I was like, I would like to change this particular thing. And I ended up pulling lots of the code out of the gym into my project and not understanding even what was going on after that because so much of it is magical. And uh, I also didn't like a lot of the, the stuff in there. Um, I also feel like its popularity level. Uh, personally, I don't feel it's, it's a good enough system that its popularity level is justified. I mean, people must like it, but I don't know why. Because every time I've used it, and that's like three times, one of which I tried in production and then pulled it out immediately. But um, every time I've tried to use it, I've gotten really frustrated because so much of, of device is hidden inside the gym, and it's very kind of opaque what's going on. And so anytime I wanted to know how something was going on, I basically had to dig in and open up the gym source files and read them so I could actually do the thing that I wanted. And that might be a, a documentation issue, but I, I, there's a lot of magic going on. Your new maker would have been proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> because I was reading the code? Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't reading the code because I wanted to know it was there. I, I, wanted, I, I, I was trying to solve a problem, so sorry. it probably wouldn't be. Um, so some other stuff. Uh, I felt like when I did the kind of rake stuff to pull the code into my project, that it was really bad code. Like, I felt the views that they had implemented, the, the login views, the password reset views, I thought that they were shit. So I ended up nuking them. Like, I looked at them and I was like, okay, those are the fields that I need to set. 
I wiped them out and started over because I, I did not like them. Um, <clears throat> this may be different. I haven't actually tested the waters in about six months, but when I was trying it, uh, devices like routing stuff it was extremely difficult to like figure out where it was coming from and to change. And I was like, I would like this particular thing to be my login or you know my sign up. And the device was like, no, I would not like that to happen. So you know, I tried to redefine it. I ended up, I think, forking and then changing it deep down in the bowels on my fork, which is not a thing that I want to do. And yeah, my big my big WTF is where the hell is all of this coming from? So that was my experience with device. I would love to hear an opposing argument from someone because. I, I've never talked to anyone who's like, yeah, device, let's do this. But it has like a billion committers, so. I used to be that way. Why were you that way? <coughs> um, I think if you have an application that you know exactly how the authentic authentication needs to work, and it's like really basic, you know, you're not going to need anything custom, and you're trying to get it out really quickly, um, I, I think it can work well. But as soon as you try to go off that golden path at all, um, it's probably better off just doing it yourself. Anybody else? Has anyone else used device? Things? Is anyone still use still using device? <coughs> Do you like it a little bit? Don't care. It's like he said. You know, if you want to ship something fast, it's probably the best solution. And I I had to end up like writing my own controllers pretty much. All the time, bringing out things out of the <coughs> of the device controller, but I feel it's less of a pain than writing your own personally. But I don't know. I feel like I've overridden so much and done so much customization of device at this point that I should actually sell uh, device consulting as a thing I offer as a freelancer. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I mean, it's very popular, so that might actually be a thing that you could do. I think it's viable. Because if I ever had to use device, I'd be like, oh. <laughs> I'd probably actually just like try to figure out a way to get all of the code into the main code base. That's pretty much our experience too. I mean, we, we, we used it at high hopes. We had to customize a few things and just felt all the pain and quickly abandoned ship. Yeah. Same here. Okay, everyone's on the device hate train. I'm glad <laughs> I don't have to sway you. Uh, like, why the hell is there STI here? <laughs> oh man, I totally forgot. Yes, it used to be. I think they've actually changed that now. But it used to be STI, which is like my least favorite thing in Rails. It's STI single table inheritance. Yes, for everybody. Single table inheritance. If someone's like, we should do a single table inheritance, you probably shouldn't listen to that person on that particular <laughs> subject. <laughs> Maybe others. Uh, okay, so next up is off logic. Uh, this may be false, but this is my experience, like all of these. Uh, I feel that OffLogic is, is a very stable project, um, good and bad. Uh, we use it all the time, it's very reliable, it just kind of does its thing and, and does it. Um, it's not middleware like device, which I like. Uh, on the other hand, it is also very magical in a very different way than device. Um, it doesn't even have kind of like, it is not a declarative authentication system. It is like, I put I put this column in my database, and now I have that thing. That is how magical it is. Um, it is not very well maintained. The, the, main, the main repo for it is, uh, I think it was updated a couple times back in like May or March or something for Rails 3. Um, so it's kind of... I feel like it's probably going to lose a lot of popularity. It's still it's still okay, but it's not it's not great. Um, the documentation is about the worst thing ever. If you want to find out what the magic columns are, you have to go read the code. There's basically no documentation. I've used it in so many projects that I kind of know what they are, but like it's not it is not user friendly or like new user friendly at all. Um, so I pulled this out of a real a real project. Uh, from project burn down, so you could ignore account ID and archive stuff. But um, so an example of the magic is a single access token thing. is basically uh, an API key usage thing. Uh, the perishable token is for doing password resets, um, and a lot of this other stuff just gets automatically set uh, during requests if they're there. And if they're not, they don't. It's very, very, very magical. Um, 
this is a class that has stuff, but the, the important part is X is authentic. That's the thing that you get. That's how you get your user to work. All right, so my experience with AuthLogic. Uh, it is, once you grok AuthLogic, it's easy. Um, clearly, I have a lot of experience with it, so I kind of know what's going on. Uh, you will not know that the first time you try and use it. Um, the R docs for it are an illegible mess of, of crap that will not help you. Um, and it is not well maintained, which is kind of a bummer. And, uh, yeah, okay, you can read. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little dig on the Rails community, meetings past it, but it's kind of true. Um, I, I suspect everyone who's been doing Rails for more than like two years in here has probably used OffLogic at some point. Um, is anyone still using it for like new stuff? Do you like it? it I do. I like, yeah, I like it. Why do you like it? Um, be, well, Devise is, it's much, I, I think Devise is more magical than OffLogic. I feel like with Devise, every time I use it, it's it's almost like you have to learn a new system. Whereas with AuthLogic, I feel like I just define some tables, cert some fields in a table, or in the, uh, in, the in a migration, and uh, and then I can kind of do things the way I want to do it. Okay, that's been my experience too. But I've used it a lot. Anyone else want to chime in? Short, sweet, and to the point, pretty much. Cool. Uh, yeah. So really, if you're looking for not for like a full featured authentication system, I think I think AuthLogic is a very good choice. Um, even though it's not that great maintained, like it does have pretty good tests that will test all the things and they mostly pass. Uh, I don't know what the state is with 193, but I'm sure it's broken. So. It, it it broke with 3.1. But I think it started working again at three one one. Clarence. Okay, so Clarence, if you've not heard of it or used it, is like the super simple DPU supers. It was written by Thoughtbot to do uh, authentication for Rails three. Uh, the basics are that you get password and user, and that's about all it defines for you. So uh, Thoughtbot made it. That's pretty cool. Thoughtbot does pretty good stuff usually. Um, it's very well maintained. Uh, there's a new release pretty often, and commits happen almost every week to just kind of like make it better. <coughs> so I don't know. I don't know how I, I think that's good here, and not on device, but for some reason I do. You can try and like figure that out. I don't know what the answer is there. Um, so the way that the way that uh, clearance works is when you run their rate command, which or the Rails generate command is that. It just kind of pushes some code into your project for the most part. And it's very simple code and easy to understand. Uh, my experience was that there were some bugs. Um, and I'm pretty sure right now it doesn't support like the, the coolest cool thing in the Rails community for authentication, which is vCrypt. I'm sure it's coming, but it's not there. I don't think. Um, I tried to look around for it today, but I couldn't, couldn't figure out if it was there. Um, so this is the extremely simple clearance database. Uh, you can see there's a remember token, confirmation token, and like a password. That's about it. That's about as easy as it gets, and really a thing that you would probably write yourself if you were doing it. Um, here's some classes for it. Uh, it uses a little bit different syntax for the before filters for authorization or excuse me, authentication than a lot of these stuff does, but uh, pretty easy. So this was my experience with it. I'll just let you read it. But I, I did. I found a bug, and then I, I got into, into there, and then I was like, cool. And I did the thing I wanted, which was authentication. So anyone using clearance and protection? Uh, anyone use clearance at all? Uh, okay, cool. Let's move on. Uh, sorcery. <coughs> I've never used this. This is the thing that I wanted to do today and did not get to. Uh, it does purport to support Sinatra and Mongo. It has a bunch of providers, uh, like a lot and stuff. 
and I'm going to leave this one up to you. If anyone has used it, I would love for you to talk for about a minute about it. If no one has, then I'm going to skip past this. It appears to be pretty cool. <laughs> it has a good name. No, this, this has nothing to do with sorcery, but I do like that I've, I feel like I've single-handedly managed to make Mongo a part of every discussion that we have in some way. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of that. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you take credit for me. Okay. Uh, so this is what I found for the for the database. Thankfully, these are white with white backgrounds, black text, so it's a little easier. Uh, it's got some weird stuff in there, but like activation state. I'm not really sure what that was. Uh, the one good thing that I found about sorcery while I was digging around was there are about. Uh, I think there are like four repos, example repos of apps that are built with sorcery. So like the documentation as as code is pretty good, like for actual use, which I, I think is lacking in some other things. Um, this was like some really awful class that I found in one of those examples that I hated, but I put it on there. I had to shrink it down. I think there's like another like 80 lines or something over there. Oh yeah, I see that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, so this is an OAuth controller that I found, um, super simple, a lot simpler than if you have to write all of the Ruby yourself. I, think. I like the idea of just, I think that it's got a group of like 20 methods or something to work with. It has a very, it has so a very it's small not, Yeah, it's syntax. not much to remember for it, but I think I, what I didn't like about this is that you can only have like one user-ish class to use it with. You know, say you had users and admins, and they were separate classes. I don't, I don't think it supports them. I, I am not sure that's true, but you could be right. There we go. That's my conclusion. <laughs> uh, so the next one is the, the the oldest of these that I could find. It's still relatively popular. Uh, I'm going to skip back a bunch to the popularity chart. And I'm going to shock the people who have been using Rails for a while. Shocking. This is RESTful auth. Can you believe that? <coughs> it's third. Okay. Like still third. It's still third. That was I pulled that like two days ago. Uh, but wait, what's that based work? on? Is that based on GitHub watching? Uh, it's based on a bunch of stuff. There's kind of there's watching, number of commits, forks, a whole bunch of stuff. And I was going to put a picture of the number of forks of RESTful auth, but I zoomed all the way out in my browser, and it was still like three pages. So <laughs> there's a lot of forks of RESTful auth. Probably someone has done the thing that you want to do with RESTful auth. You just got to find it. Uh, so RESTful auth is an old thing. It was built originally in Rails 1.2, I think. Matt is, is nodding at me. He's my source of old Rails knowledge. Um, so the main repo hasn't been updated in more than a year. Uh, there are a shitload of forks, like hundreds of forks. Um, some of them have been updated in the last month. Uh, it is not a gem. There are gems of it, but the main repo is not a gem. It is a plugin. Uh, Newmaker and Matt and someone else and I got into an argument at RubyConf about plugins versus gems, and I got schooled because I like plugins. Um, I'm going to tell you to not use it, so just so you know. Um, my, my impressions of it are is a very good basis for building your own because it is very it is a very basic authentication system and it does a lot of stuff in a very, like the code is very readable. Um, I don't think so. I think some of it's not compatible anymore with Rails. Like, I'm not sure, but I think that is the case. Um, it is a very old authentication system. Anyone using RESTful auth in production right now? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone other than expected behavior using RESTful auth? Well, I, I can say my latest do it yourself is I mean, a lot of the, the naming is based off RESTful auth. Just, you know, oh, hey, I need a method. Look over RESTful auth and, like, oh, this is a good name for this. And yes. Follow some of those conventions. Um, so, yeah. It's, it's a good project to look at if you're just coming to Rails because uh, it does kind of some quintessential Rails stuff, but it's probably not a good basis for your authentic group. It's not a good thing to use just straight out of the box. Uh, all right. 
the last thing I want to talk about is do-it-yourself authentication. Um, I should say before I get through here, like there are Rails casts of a lot of these things, which are a good starting point. Um, so if you like videos, Rails cast of a lot of this stuff is good. So do it yourself. Um, if anyone has rolled authentication themselves, let's, let's see how many of us have done that. I'm shocked that it's not everyone in the room. But, <laughs> Anyway, um, there are a lot of people who have done auth systems in the past. Clearly, I'm giving you like the uh, the down and dirty like top four or five. Uh, there are about a billion of them out there, built in various languages. Um, one thing that's nice when you do it yourself is you get to define your data, uh, which is not always nice. But um, you know, if you're if you're really feeling crazy, you can make your own gem. You can be like, my gem is called auth awesome. And it is more awesome than all of those other auth gems. And I'm going to be number one in the popularity charts. And that's probably not true, but you can think it if you want. Um, really, the main problem I feel with, with auth uh, doing it yourself is you're probably going to make a mistake at some point once it gets to any level of complexity. And then you're going to be like, well, how do I solve this problem? And there's no like place to go to ask the question, like how do I fix this? You're gonna have to go talk to your coworkers, or you're just gonna have to think really hard, or write some tests. So it's kind of, kind of, uh, you can get into weird situations where like the interactions between Rack and Rails, and you know your auth system start start being weird. So you know just just know that. Um, yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty much what you get. So this is. This is your database. That's what it's going to look like. Probably going to have like weird column names, and your classes are going to be like that. But your your impressions are, yeah, it's awesome. So uh, I have actually done this. I built before I go digital a while back, which they probably replaced at this point. I built a huge dish. <laughs> <laughs> I built an authentication system that sits on top of Mongo, uh, based on RESTful auth. It was super easy. It took about a day. In fact, so that we could make your system keep working, we forked Mongoid and cut out some stuff that's probably necessary but that we don't actually use because the changes in that code broke other things. So, yeah. Yeah. Your system is alive and actively destroying Mongoid. <laughs> I feel that's a win. So, I had a lot of fun when I did it. Uh, it's a fun exercise. Um, yeah. I, I highly encourage it. It's really easy to do, like the basic thing. There's, there's that uh, Rails tutorial book that is kept up pretty well. It's got a 3.0 track and a 2. <coughs> whatever track. And one of the things they do in that book is work through rolling your own. And that's oh, nice. that. If you won't, don't want to just do it in isolation, that might be uh, something to look at. Cool. Is it Rails tutorial? I think I think it's railstutorial.org even or it's. Yeah. Is that what it is? How to work. Mark it's a Mark pretty Mark. good. It's a good tutorial in general, but I think cool. I'm not an expert, so I can't really say. Okay, I just reminded myself of another piece of Ruby news. Uh, Ryan Bates, who runs Railscast, went uh, went Railscast only this month because he opened the new like pro thing, and apparently enough people signed up at nine dollars a month for him to quit his job and do Railscast full time. So if you guys like Brian Bates or Railscast, then maybe you want to give him nine bucks or something. Really. It's a really good service. Is it nine bucks a month? I think that's correct. Yeah. What do you get for that? I didn't. I have I know it happened, but I didn't go read one. Extra Railscast. Okay. He is also revamping some of the old Railscasts yeah, yeah, to bring them up that. to date. <coughs> you only get access to those if you yeah. uh, pro up. Uh, so. <coughs> so you pay nine dollars for that, but not nine dollars every month. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. <laughs> you can pay Enough for people month. will. I think, I think I'm so done actually. Like an a la carte. Yeah. That would be nice. That's the end. <laughs> Pete Anybody have any thoughts on other authentication systems that I've missed? I, I was curious if uh, authenticated system was in that uh, the chart at the beginning. I forgot about that one. Yep, just keep zooming on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is, is there an enhanced button? <laughs> <laughs> I think the it's graph is the next version of Photoshop. Yeah, the deep blur thing. Did anyone? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I don't think it's crazy. CSI has had that for years. No. <laughs> Off logic, RESTful, Omni clearance, sorcery. I didn't talk about Omni off. Uh, RPX now. 
do wait special. <laughs> I've never heard those. <laughs> where's where's X is a Oh. RPX whatever the I, I know many RPX projects now, still run on the update system. I forget what authenticated systems like <coughs> slant was. I'm pretty sure authenticated systems what introduced uh, required login or whatever it's called. Wasn't that the system before REST Yeah, like yeah. Rest it's kind of what like became REST Yeah, It's good stuff though. In the old days, back when the computers ran on horse. <laughs> uh, that's all. Anyone have any thoughts on other stuff? If not, I'm done.